Today marks the first major title update for Rainbow Six Siege since the game went live a couple of weeks ago. If you want to know what's going to happen when you turn on the game the next time, then stay with me as I go over the full list of update changes. December's title update patch is going to be the first of a series of monthly patches that Ubisoft is committing to for Rainbow Six Siege going forward. There's a lot of features and bug fixes here, especially considering the game has only been out for a few weeks. And while there's definitely more work that we want to see done, for only two weeks in, this is a lot of stuff. One of the really big pieces of information is that if you're on the PC, you now have a visual update for the Ultra HD Texture Pack, which is now available. And this will support up to 4K resolution gaming. They say if you're running a 4GB GPU, you'll still be able to enjoy the texture pack from 1080p to 1440p resolutions. And you can scale that up all the way through 6GB GPUs, but if you have dual GPUs and more than 6 gigs of video RAM, you're going to be able to run 4K with Ultra HD textures with the highest settings of lighting and shading and take advantage of things like displacement mapping. All of this is a free DLC, and you'll need to download it from Steam and Uplay. Normally, this is the kind of thing that gets modded or released after the game's been out for a very long time, but just to have this right out of the gate right away, if you've got the power to support something like this, this is going to be great for you. A gameplay feature they've implemented is an auto-kick feature for Intentional Team Killer. They said they've set some parameters that'll cause an automatic kick of a team killer within a match. They said they're trying their best to make a distinction between accidental team killing and intentional team killing. I don't really know how you would know about the intention behind a team kill, but apparently they have some parameters in place to try to measure that. Maybe it's the amount of times it happens. If it just happens to you once or twice, it's not a big deal. But if you do it match after match, maybe that's how they determine intention. I'm not really sure. They say the same goes for intentional hostage killing while playing as a defender. They're going to be tracking if the auto kick feature reduces intentional team killing instances, and they'll be adjusting the rigorous parameters according to how effective it is. Additionally, if you're on the PC, you can now use your mouse wheel in addition to the arrow keys to navigate the player selection screen. Hit registration improvements across the board have been made as well. They say there's actually a lot of issues that are being worked on. Some of them are going to be addressed in this update. Others will come in further updates. But here's what we've got right now. They fixed bugs on the replication and kill cam. The difference between a player's action, the server's perception, and another player seeing that action had an extra delay due to a bug. So that's been resolved. Certain shield angles were not being replicated properly, and this causes shield player to be overprotected in some cases. And that caused some hit detection problems, and they figured that out. Uh, they were also able to fix shooting and moving while repelling. Apparently there's a lot of issues with the repelling and movement and shooting mechanics there, and they've taken care of a lot of those kinds of things. Also, there was a bunch of issues related to kill cam not displaying accurately, you know, the way that the shot was made or how the player was killed. So they made it so that the point of view seen after death was uh, more accurately representative of what actually happened. They do acknowledge that they're going to have more work on this. It's ongoing, but at least they've started the ball rolling in that. If you're on PC, you can also look forward to an update on the server tick rate. What they're going to do is set that at 60 times per second versus the current 30 times per second. This is something they're still trying to get ironed out, but they're releasing it on PC first because it has a faster deployment speed compared to consoles. I imagine they have to go through Microsoft and Sony certification processes, and that would take longer to do, whereas on PC they can just put it out right away. They did say that once they've kind of played around with the feature and ironed it all out, that they're going to try to get it deployed on the consoles as soon as they can. A major gameplay change comes to the playlist, where they're unifying the experiences between casual and ranked. So in player versus player, the ranked playlist HUD is going to be synced up with casual playlists. There's going to be virtually no difference between ranked and casual experience as far as what's going on. I think the only difference is that the kill cam is not going to be happening in ranked versus casual, but otherwise they're going to be all the same. And then what they're going to do is come out with a separate hardcore playlist, which will definitely have a casual. I don't know if it will also have a hardcore ranked or not. I kind of hope that there will be. But they're starting work on the hardcore playlist, and that'll be available in the beginning of 2016. It'll have a really minimal HUD, and they're trying for a more realistic experience. They have put in a hardcore HUD preset into custom games. That way you can kind of play around for what they're aiming for without actually being able to do it in the proper PvP mode, but you can at least see the direction they're going in. And that would give the community time to voice their thoughts and see, you know, what the gauge the reaction to what they think about it. Ranked matchmaking is getting some improvements, and they're refining the ranked skill rating system, and they're increasing the reliability of endgame skill rank updates. Well, what does that all mean? So the way skill-based matchmaking is going to work now is that it's going to try to match you with players plus or minus one rank difference from you. 
If it can't find anything within those parameters, it increases that by one rank in each direction every 30 seconds. They're aware that this is going to increase the average duration of ranked matchmaking, but they feel that that gives the players the experience that they're looking for rather than being completely mismatched. As more and more players are hitting that level 20 entry for the ranked gate, they're going to have a wider and wider pool of players to choose from. So hopefully that's a good experience in that you have more players to play with, but you're being matched up more appropriately with people that are going to be more closely matched to your ability. They've also addressed the problem of when you play ranked and you have a significant change in rating based on the outcome of a match, either gaining a whole bunch of ranks or losing a whole bunch of ranks just on the outcome of a single match. And they said that what they're going to do is adjust it so that losing and gaining more than two ranks should be much more rare now. They're changing the penalty for abandoning a ranked game in progress to eight minutes. I think part of that is they've been getting blowback in that there's so many connection errors that aren't the player's fault, and then they get banned for the, uh, what was it, 15 or 20 minutes, and they weren't able to get back into a match again. So they've recognized that part of that is a problem and that they need to kind of bring the penalty down on. They don't want to get rid of it entirely because there is a legitimate need for the feature, but it's also not a perfect system with all the server disconnects. They say they're currently reworking the Abandon and Reconnect system, and they'll improve it more once they finish overhauling it. So this is kind of a work in progress and sort of a, uh, I guess, just a workaround until it's all, all ironed out. Additionally, the skill rank icon is now placed on the game's main screen right next to your level. Some other matchmaking improvements are in player versus player, they fixed a bug where matchmaking would sometimes use their skill data from the wrong region. In Terrorist Hunt, they fixed a bug where players would sometimes be matched with people from other regions. And also in Terrorist Hunt, they improved quality of service detection when matching players together. Some balancing issues that were addressed is spawn killing reduction. What they did was they took the time for when the defenders could run outside the structure and be detected from 5 seconds down to 2 seconds. They said their game design philosophy is to have the attackers safe haven be outdoors and the defenders indoors. They felt that 5 seconds gave them too much time to position their opponents and made the attackers too unsafe outside. So the thought process behind this was that they wanted the attackers to have more control over the exterior and not have the defenders come out as much. I'm sort of on the fence with this one. I mean, I see that it's a, a valid tactic to be able to go outside, and yet there were definitely people that were using it to just completely spawn kill another team. While I didn't see a lot of examples of that, it did sometimes occur. You'd see some YouTube video clips of it and things like that. I've never seen it personally, but I've seen other people post videos of it happening. So this is an attempt to try to deal with that problem. Two seconds might be a little heavy, but we'll see how it all plays out. I, I can see it going both ways. Here's one that's really important for me since I'm a big co-op player. They've changed the difficulty for Terrorist Hunt Disarm Bomb. What they did was they reduced the maximum number of white masks and reduced the wave sizes. They said when they were looking at all the player input that they got was that the bomb success rates were way lower than they wanted to have. They said in realistic difficulty, they didn't even have a 0.1% success rate on realistic for Disarm Bomb. And they were trying for a 1%, so they really not getting a lot of people completing that and they felt it was too hard. I think even just having a 1% completion rate for a realistic is kind of too aggressive of a goal. I mean, if your goal is that 99% of the people that do this will fail their attempt, that seems a little brutal, but okay, I guess that's what the other modes of difficulty are for. Either way, it's nice to see a, a little bit of breathing room on that. I actually wound up disabling the disarm bomb mode from my playlist because it was so infuriating. I play Lone Wolf a lot, and when you do that mode in Lone Wolf, it's really difficult to have an enjoyable experience because it's like a you-can't-catch-your-breath mode. The, the infinite spawn waves just keep coming and keep coming, and you can't even like turn and fill up your ammo at the crate because they're just on top of you right away, and there's no way to thin out the enemies. Playing in a five-man team, it's okay, but when you play by yourself, it's pretty brutal. On PC, they increased the amount of characters available in the chat box. They went from 32 characters up to 128 characters. So for those of you that use the text chat on PC, you'll enjoy that. They made a slight change to Glaz and increased his scope's visibility. Uh, what they did was they tuned it so that the red scope filter isn't quite as heavily tinted red. It's a little bit lighter in overall color and intensity. And it does a slightly better job of seeing into the different lighting conditions. So when you're outside looking into the building, whether you're daytime or nighttime, that difference will be a little bit more usable as that character as it should be. And the uh, the glow and lighting effects that will sometimes hit that and create some artifacting on the scope are also apparently reduced a little bit as well. They also addressed a number of community raised bug fixes. So these are bug fixes that people on Reddit or on the forums or Twitter have pointed out to them and said, hey guys, these are problems, do something about them. 
So the first one's kind of big. It was a bug that allowed defenders to put down a deployable shield and boost a teammate out of the inner shell of the building during the preparation phase and allow them to get into the player spawns. And they made it so that you can't do that anymore. That is huge because that was really being exploited. I would never personally had that happen to me, but I've heard a lot of people having that problem. And I've seen video clips of it happening to other people too, so that can no longer be done. They resolved an issue where bullet impacts wouldn't be registered. They also fixed a bug where the terrorists wouldn't take any damage if they were getting shot in the stomach. Here's a good one. Tagging attackers through the security cameras as defenders will now properly identify operators in the HUD, because formerly that only worked when you were an attacker with a camera drone, but not when you were a defender with the camera network. They fixed a bug where you couldn't switch cameras during the prep phase when your drone got destroyed, so rather than sitting there and looking at a screen filled with static, you should now be able to cycle through some of the other cameras. They fixed a bug where a player could get stuck. They fixed a bug where the camera would get turned upside down after repelling. They also fixed one where the player got stuck after using the repel feature. And opening Uplay Overlay now pauses the situation's cinematics. They also fixed a problem where the drone would fall through the map at the start of the preparation phase. I hope this is fixed across all maps and modes. This happened a lot during the beta. I haven't seen it happen too much during the final release, but apparently it does still occur, and it sounds like that's fixed. They fixed a few different bugs in which drones could fall off the map or teleport to random locations when they were thrown. I've never seen that happen, but it sounds kind of funny. They've also fixed an issue where Twitch's shock drone would fall through the map when launched from a prone position while you're backed up against a wall. I've also never seen that one too, but good to know that that's fixed. Some changes made to the online flow where they fixed an issue where squads would get split up when returning to the lobby or the menu. I can't wait to find out if this is accurate or not. Uh, right now, I'm at work on my lunch break, so I won't get home for another five or six hours to see if this is true or not. But I play squads very heavily. And every time you're playing, you want to back out and make an adjustment, and you bust up your squad every time to do that and have to reinvite everybody. It's a big pain in the butt. So if that's truly fixed, that'll be great. They also fixed a bug where the XP and Renown screen post-match would be empty, so the Zero Renown bug uh, apparently has been fixed. They also fixed a bug where you could see the enemy team's operator choices during the selection phase. I don't think this was happening on consoles, but this was happening on PC. You should now be able to see your teammates in the lobby on rematch. They also fixed a Renown exploit in Terrorist Hunt. They also changed it so that in matchmaking, players searching for a session will now automatically reach Step 2, the Joining Game Session stage. They fix an issue in inviting players, which are currently in a lobby. A couple of error codes are fixed as well. There was also a fix for a connectivity issue in which the session hanged and all the players were disconnected if a character left the session or got disconnected while escorting the hostage. So I'm sure you've all noticed that the blood in the game until now has looked rather cartoonish, very bright red. Some people say it's an orange. Uh, I, I just think it's a very cartoon colored red. And this was an unintentional side effect of something else having been adjusted. I'm not sure what that would be exactly. But regardless, it's been fixed. And now apparently the blood color has been corrected to something more realistic. Again, I can't wait to see that for myself a little later. They've made some adjustments to the user interface as well. They fixed a bug in which the text chat character limit would be even shorter than 32 characters sometimes. There's also a bug which allowed attackers to vote for a spawn location during the prep phase in casual, and that's been repaired. Also, a bug in the portal menu was shifted to the left when booting the game. They also resolved an issue where the player wasn't able to invite players in the profile screen on the Xbox and PlayStation. There's also a few unspecified minor tweaks to improve the user interface overall. Under miscellaneous fixes, they list a PC voice chat bug in which inviting players to the game set the squad leader's voice chat record mode to open. That's been resolved. A bug in which pressing Alt-Enter on the PC in-game while having personal information panel open would leave the player with no functionality has been resolved. They said they added a clear indication in-game so that you know all Terrorist Hunt mode difficulty levels are intended for a full team of five. And while that's okay, I'm glad that they did that, I also wish that they would scale the experience depending on the amount of players in the squad. So that way you still get a good usable experience, whether you're playing Lone Wolf or with just one friend or two friends, just as much as you have when you're playing with five people. When you're playing Lone Wolf, it shouldn't just simply be five times harder. There was another fix for the PC that dealt with the refresh rate selection being broken, so that's taken care of now. Localization fixes have been made as they updated the text in multiple languages, and various connection, stability, performance errors, and crash issues have been fixed. That last one is a little too generalized for my taste. My experience with the game so far has been that uh, when I play with a squad of four or five people, we get disconnected constantly. If I play with a squad of three people or less, it's generally pretty reliable. When I play by myself, it's very reliable. 
But in a team-based game, when I play with my squad of teammates, a full squad of teammates, we get disconnected constantly. And I can't tell if that last point addresses that issue or not. I'll have to see for myself later tonight when I play, but it's a little unsettling that they weren't more specific and they just sort of lumped all of that into one little little sentence there at the end. So we'll see what that translates into. All in all, I do have to say that for a game that's only been out for two weeks, they've addressed a lot of issues. A big part of that list was community-initiated bugs that they dealt with. So this wasn't things that they had that were broken going into the game that they knew about. These were patches, a half of this list anyway, were patches that the community said, hey, now that we're playing the game, these are broken, please fix them. And they responded within the last couple of weeks. So that shows a pretty good commitment to dealing with these kinds of issues now and going on in the future where every month they're going to do one of these major title updates to make adjustments and tweaks. And I, I should be clear that if there's any hot fixes that they'll still continue to deal with those as needed too. It's not that those won't occur or you have to wait a month before something changes that way. But, you know, the big updates are going to be, you know, once a month. There's still some things that the community is going to want to continue to see, and I would encourage you to get onto the forums or onto the subreddit and let them know the developers do read comments made in both of those sections. So if there's a bug that you're encountering in the game, let them know, submit an official bug report, make them aware of these kinds of things so that they know to fix them. If there's something in the game that you feel is unbalanced or you want to see adjusted or changed, again, go to those proper forums or subreddits, let them know, share your thoughts and opinions. You know, they're going to be responding to these games dynamically and adjusting them based on what we as a community kind of want to see going forward. And that's a really cool commitment from the developer team. So if, like me, you're stuck at work right now and you haven't had a chance to play the game with the new changes from the update yet, you'll at least know what you have to look forward to the next time you sit down to play the game. During the month of December, I'll be collecting submissions for a free copy of Rainbow Six Siege for the Xbox One. This will be a digital download code only, and here's how it'll work. Want to reward subscribers to the channel? So if you're a new subscriber, type the word RECRUIT in all capital letters in the comments down below and tell me why you'd like a copy of the game, as well as something you'd like to see me do on the channel. If you're a veteran subscriber and you've been around for a while, I want to reward you too. So type the word VETERAN in all capital letters in the comments below. Tell me something new you'd like to see on the channel that hasn't been covered before and why you'd like a copy of the game as well. The winner will be chosen just before Christmas. I'll take one winner from the veteran pool and one winner from the recruit pool, and there will be a 50-50 chance which one gets the game in the end. So to give you the best chance of winning, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.